the chart. Now this is quite a nice piece of chestnut. It's got some lovely grain pattern here. So I think it should make a beautiful bowl. The only problem we've got is this side. All the wood is down here. Now, what I was thinking is to turn an off center bowl uh, and a bowl without a base which may sound a little bit strange, but what it basically entails is that we're going to turn a bowl in this area here as if it's protruding through this wood surface. Uh, the base itself will be coming out the bottom here and then we'll have like a wing coming out this side and slightly on this side as well. Uh, that may not make much sense, but I'm sure you'll get the hang of it as we're going along. Now, first problem we're going to have is chucking this. Now, I want the centre of the bowl to be somewhere around there. There. Okay, so we're going to have a bowl in this area. Uh, Balance-wise, it is going to wobble a bit, but the extra wood we have on these ends should hopefully account for the mass we've got on this end, so it may not be too bad. But we'll figure out as we're going along. Uh, I'm going to drill a hole in here for the worm screw and then we'll get started. Okay, we're about set up. It's not the best balanced thing I've ever seen in my entire life. When I get this mass out of here, it should hopefully improve somewhat. I don't think it'll ever get brilliant though. Uh, we're going to be turning around 600 mark. It is going to be a shaky ride. Hooch is in for uh, a bit of a shock, I think. Uh, I've sharpened up. Face mask on. Blood on, because some of the bits flying off this are going to sting a bit. We'll uh, get started. I can hear that I'm starting to hit both sides, so we need to stop and have a quick look that we don't start taking away material that we don't want to take away because we need a bowl in this area. So I've gone. Okay, I think the amount I've gone in so far is sufficient at the moment. Okay, so I'm going to keep on working in this distance from here and here and for about another inch or so, maybe an inch and a half, two inches and see how this is looking and we'll start working on a bowl when we feel we've got to the right depth and we can make something nice in this area. Hopefully by now you're starting to see the kind of vision and hopefully also you're starting to see the kind of problems that we're going to have because we don't have, we've got a very very high spot here and a very low spot there and it's not going to get an awful lot better. Okay, this bowl either needs to be smaller or I need to go a lot further down. It's going to be a very rustic bowl. I don't mind rustic. Okay, let me take this a bit further and then we'll start to make some decisions. Okay, it is going to have to come down further. 
because I need a place to chuck this. And at the moment there's nowhere I can get a chuck out of. Don't forget that the chuck has got to hold an off-center piece, so we do have to be a little bit careful of it. Beautiful looking wood though. <laughs> oh, hello. For our conclusion, we do like them. Right, okay, I'm gonna make this a little bit smaller and go down further. Okay, nice. We're getting away with it. Now, I'm going to finish off this tenon. Now, the wood from the tenon has to start curving all straight away because this bowl isn't going to have a traditional foot on it because it's going to be at an angle. It's going to sit at an angle. So all of these are going to have to be done with pull cuts because I really daren't take away this yet until the very last moment. I'm going to sort this out. So, okay, pull cuts, create the bowl. Take this further down, sort out that, then sand, and then turn it around. Something like that. as bowl shaped as I can get it for now with everything being in the way so I think I'm just gonna thin this wall down a little bit smooth off this surface and then we'll worry a bit more about this I'm just going to take the tailstock away just to get rid of this last little bit and then I'll put it back in to make a mark for when we have to take it off at the end. I'm just going to turn the speed down low. That moved straight away. Why did you move? Right, the only thing I can think why it's moved is because when I touched, pushed in the uh, tailstock at the start, it wasn't sat on a flat enough area, it kind of pushed it over a bit. Because this is all solid. So I'm gonna take this down and then try and figure out what to do. If I take this tenon any smaller, it's going to be too small for my chuck. So I think I'm going to have to take this bowl down a bit further and make a new tenon. Which is a pain, but we have to do these things. Whatever it was, I've kind of thrown everything off, so I've got to redo this surface again as well. But 
Yeah, we will. There's a, a saying which goes, wood turners don't make mistakes, just smaller bowls. So it's just going to be slightly smaller. That's fine. Okay, so I'm going to sort out the tent again. We are going to leave a little nub in there because I'm not risking this being unsupported while we're sanding. So I'll do the cleaning up, sort the tenon, and then we'll start sanding. Okay, it's not an ideal surface to start sanding, but I've certainly started with worse. So I'll let you watch a bit of it, but then I'll bring you back when it's done. I've got a new format for sanding, so you're only going to have to watch about five seconds, something like that. Okay, thank goodness that's over with. Right, I'm gonna go and have my lunch, and then when I'm back, we'll turn this round and we'll get started on the other side. Okay, I'm back from my lunch, but before we do turn this round, I just have to quickly take off this little knob. I'm just gonna take a chisel, going with the end grain downwards. Just to help us align this back up when we come to take the tenon off, I'm just gonna put a little dot back in. That's gonna help us line it back up. All right, we can turn it around. Okay, we're all back in place. First step is to start taking down these edges a bit further, but I need to bear in mind where this bowl needs to be. That's where the bowl is going to be, the outside of the bowl. So I don't necessarily want uh, to get there straight away. So I'm just going to give myself a little bit of room for error and take it to about there. Right, I'm going to go and sharpen up again and we shall start. Okay, all sharpened up already. It's time to turn this time at about 5.50. There's a real problem with this area. I have the same on the other side, so I'm going to have to fix a lot of that with sanding. Okay, right, I'm going to make this join here. So we've got a clear distinction between the bowl at the bottom and the top. And then we can start the interesting job of hollowing it out. Top of the bowl. Thickness wise, about there. I'm gonna have to draw these lines back on because I need to face this off first. Okay, we can now start the, the task of hollowing this out. I'm gonna start a little bit with the bowl gouge 
but then I'm going to have to trust it and take the tailstock away. That's as good as I can do with the uh, tailstock there, so tailstock away. I'll live dangerously for a little bit. Hopefully, it should have gone somewhere near. Yeah, indeed, it has. Maybe I'm going to get the scraper in now and just sort out a couple of these slightly high bit we got there, and then we're just about ready for the sanding. Yay! Excellent. Right. I shall set up for sanding. Actually, I was just... Yeah, no, I'm fine. I'll set up for sanding. I'll let you watch a bit of it. But I shall bring you back when we're done. And we shall turn it round, take off the tenon, and put a finish on this. Okay, sanding all went well. We still got to turn it round and take off the tenon, so I'll do that and then bring you back to see the finish being put on. Okay, there we are, we're all finished. It doesn't quite sit how I thought it was going to be. I thought it would tilt over this way, but it, uh, it doesn't, it just sits and rocks gently, which is fine, I quite like that. Right, the finish we're going to use is a Danish oil, which we, uh, the same finish that we put on the, the walnut platter uh, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, I'm using Liberon's uh, Superior Danish Oil for two reasons. First of all, it's faster drying. Uh, you only have to allow about, about six or seven hours between coats. And also it has a UV filter in there. So you can put it where you want in the house and it won't uh, lighten or get bleached out. Saying that, it's fairly white anyway. Right, I'm going to apply this with a, just with a cotton cloth. The idea with this is that you put it on thinly, but build up lots of coats to give it a beautiful hard wearing finish. So don't try and give it or saturate it all with the first go. Right, I'm gonna let this sit in for about 15, 20 minutes, and then I'm gonna come back and wipe off the excess. I'm gonna keep on repeating that process until I feel it can't get any better. In between each coat, when it's dry, before I put the next coat on, I'm just gonna give it a light wire wooling with a, a very, very fine wire wool. Okay, but you don't have to wait that long. I'll bring you back when it's all done. And we can take a look at the finished article. Oh, one more thing. The cloths you use, or the tissues, whatever you use, either dry it flat away from anything else or shove it in water, because these 
do have the possibility to spontaneously combust. Okay, so do take great care in what you do with your cloths. Okay, see you soon. Well, there you go. A beautiful chestnut off center bowl finished in Danish oil. So about six coats of Danish oil already. I may give it another couple, but uh, the finish it gives really is quite beautiful. And some of the figure in this wood is just absolutely glorious. I'm glad I left the, uh, the chainsaw cut in there because that's a nice hark back to its original form. I did intentionally, uh, originally, make this bowl so it would sit resting on the front, but I decided it didn't want to be that way, so it kind of sits normally. But it really is quite un unusual, and I really do like it. Anyway, if you've enjoyed this video, I would really appreciate a, uh, a like and a subscribe and all that kind of thing. And if you leave a comment as well, then there's still a chance for the next giveaway, uh, which will be done next Tuesday. But apart from that, thank you very much indeed for watching, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.